Hey you guys, I wanted to come on here and talk about this article that I stumbled across from Atlanta Black Star, and it's about Kenya Barris receiving criticism for his portrayal of another interracial slash biracial relationship. And I've spoken about Kenya Barris before because I did a reaction video of me reacting to his show Black as F. And in that video, I was talking about how his concepts paralleled his past workings in which he incorporates the stereotypical quixotic interactions into his shows that do not accurately portray the black community in a positive light. I mean, sure, he gives some of them the successful occupations or they have this resplendent educational background. However, all of that becomes diluted when these stereotypes come into the show. And I understand that he may have this perception that it's for comedic relief, but it's kind of like this dry and stale humor where it's borderline kind of lame. And if you guys want to watch me react to his show, Black as F, I'll leave this video in the description box and you guys can go check that out. I do want to go ahead and jump right into this one because I don't want this video to be too long, so I'll go ahead and get started. The article starts off by saying, folks on social media already have been vocal about expressing their reservations about writer and director Kenya Barris. In recent years, the Black-ish creator has been widely accused of overly representing the Black Spectrum's fair tone side and forcing a swirl agenda onto viewers. More scrutiny came with the release of his Netflix series Black as F, with most of the cast members being of a lighter skin tone and biracial. The same has proved true for his spinoff shows such as Mixed-ish and Grown-ish. The 46-year-old was recently tapped for the remake of Cheaper by the Dozen, a 2003 family film, which was a spinoff of a 1950s version, a move that has made for more backlash. The comedy, which centers around a couple trying to juggle marriage, careers, and 12 children, where star actress Gabriella Union as the mother and actor Zach Braff as the father. Following the announcement, critics took to social media where they aired out their complaints about Barris' decisions to write stories centered around biracial families over all black families. I want to say this, I think we all by this point know and understand Kenya Barris' mindset very well and what his reality of blackness is. He seems to think that a ratio of two dark-skinned black people to six lighter-skinned or biracial people is the accepted formula for the creation of these shows, which is why for shows like Blackish and Black as Ever, are portrayed accordingly. Even though I've never watched Blackish, you can clearly see that a certain portion of the cast on that show are mixed. You have Tracy Ellis Ross, you have Yara Shahidi, and even Marcus Scribner looks like he's mixed. But either way, there are mixed people even in a show that you would think judging by the name would primarily feature black actors and actresses and i've said myself that i was unsure of why he seems to be channeling tyler perry with these cliche overly used ideas and concepts because you start to reach a certain point where you wonder if a person's talent is often embellished and exaggerated and when a person is in possession of true creative prowess and capability they can come up with several different ideas and thoughts for entertainment. They don't resort to visiting old and tired themes presented in alternate ways to amuse people. And I think because we have a culture centered around this mechanism, it's become principal in our expectations of media. And I think if I can elaborate more specifically on the culture that I'm referring to, I would say that this is a classic example of American culture. To say that this is limited just to the black community is erroneous and unfounded because even with a larger society and their media, they may have a wide array of different genres and themes. However, if you notice, they have this propensity to always make it seem like the very idea of their people's existence is so holy and serene in each portrayal, even though it's glorified white mediocrity. And without getting too far off topic, Kenyan Bears represents this component of American culture, and it's the reason why no one should really express astonishment at yet another recycled attempt at what will probably be another lame and corny show. I think for me what presents a problem is how the everlasting agenda of these interracial relationships keep being shoved down our throats because black love is a rarity in Hollywood obviously for a concerted purpose which is to eliminate the variable that black unity is what's needed to combat a system of sheer division. 
And I'm almost convinced that this man and Shonda Rhimes go on lunch dates and the first thing they talk about is black erasure and how they can further contribute to colorism. And also here's another thing. I understand that my beliefs and what I value are seen as controversial and problematic because it threatens to go against a system meant to destroy our people and it's still taboo to call out various forms of social engineering to psychologically manipulate the minds of black people. And like I said, a lot of people are talking about this across social media and there's comments on Twitter, listen on the article. And I, like I said, I won't make this too long. So continuing on, the article says, we have got to release the shackles that is Kenya Bears writing mixed family stories 150 different ways, one person wrote on Twitter. Imagine how tired we are. When will I know peace, another critic ventured. That man is not right. Kenya Bears has to be defunded. Something has to be done. We will never be free. Kenya Bears and Tyler Perry literally different sides of the same coin. Like, how do they have so much pull in the industry when their stuff is like that? Oh my gosh, makes me want to scream, a fourth stated. A fourth person referred back to a quote from an interview where the producer addressed the criticism saying, I'm not gonna make up a fake family that genetically makes no sense just for the sake of trying to fill quotas. I love my people, he added. Everything I does reflects the love, but to cast people like some kind of skin color all-star game would actually do more harm than good. So again, like I said, you guys, you can tell from some of the comments that people are tired of this. We get so tired of seeing biracial being propped up as if it's something we should all try and strive for and attain to be. Is the proposition of a pure black family so dangerous that it's an abomination for it to be seen on mainstream television? This is why black people more and more don't even watch conventional television. A lot of us are looking for independent filmmakers and movies. We look for predominantly black shows that are on YouTube. Some of them are hard to find and when you do find them, they may have something wrong because let's be honest, there's no perfect show or movie, but we can only seek something that's close to perfection. I feel like this video warrants an explanation for social engineering because I mentioned this a lot in my video. So let me expound on this. Social engineering as defined by Oxford is the use of centralized planning in an attempt to manage social change and regulate the future development and behavior of a society. So basically what this translates to is white supremacy and its media outlets use distinctive and specific images and visual stimuli to achieve a desired outcome or result. And I've actually mentioned this. There is a reason why we keep seeing these unions between black people and people from the larger society. I have a lot more I want to say about this, but I'll save it for another video because I can speak about it for much longer. But this is about Kenya Beers and his psyche with his representations. I recalled reading another article a few months ago and it provided insight for why his castings are done this way. Apparently these illustrations are based on his unique upbringing, but let's just go with that and say that this is the reason for his methods in choosing actors and actresses for his shows. It's still very unrealistic and inaccurate because what he's saying he sees blackness as is not the blackness that you may see in a lot of black families. I know for me and my immediate family, we were all either brown or dark skinned. We did not have any lighter skinned individuals in our immediate family. And for him to attach blackness to it is what's conflicting. He has the right to keep making shows using this format. My issue is when you try and associate and throw blackness into it while pouring in this acid that is negative stereotypes of black culture. And somebody even stated what I stated, and it's the fact that Kenya Beers and Tyler Perry are almost like the same person because they keep rehashing these exaggerated, worst case scenario situations into their works. And I find it interesting that he said he wasn't gonna make up a fake family that genetically makes no sense just for the sake of trying to fill quotas. I find it noteworthy that he stated this because if I'm interpreting his response the way that I think he means it, to me, he's saying having a pure black family or a pure white family is something that is simply filling a quota. And then he further stated that casting in a particular way would do more harm than good. Well, newsflash Kenya, your current casting choices are tiring and we're tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing it and I've never even watched any of his shows. I mean, this is ridiculous. I want to see a black man and a black woman together on a show with a black family that is unambiguous. And it's irritating that we have to keep reenacting these horrific eye bludgeoning hyperboles. I also stop listening to people when they insert the word but because basically that diminishes everything that was said before that conjunction. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this out because there is not much left. 
but it does go on to say, Barris went on to explain that his cast is reflective of his family members and that they face discrimination from others outside our culture and I don't want them to also see it from us. The person quoted the response writing, please never forget when Kenya Barris said this when defending his lily white and bright cast for Black as F, they added, colorism is Rashida Jones playing an Italian woman on The Office, then a black matriarch years later, but calling out the bullish is divisive, so let me go now. All right, so you guys remember when I told you that earlier, when I said that he based his decisions off of his upbringing and his family, so that part wasn't surprising. But when he says the part about discrimination from us, I don't know if he's referring to black people or someone from a larger society, but to me, if black people were doing something like bullying you or calling you names, that is something that's not remarkable in any kind of way. And I wish we would stop using context that suggests that biracial people are oppressed in some kind of way. This is that same dumb ish that Kiki Wyatt was talking about in that botched tirade she went on. The world in reality, black people have been, you know, segregated, uh, persecuted, stolen from, uh, humiliated. Uh, so through the, well, can you let me finish? Because you won't let me finish. When you talk, honey, when you talk, I have been nothing but quiet and respectful to I have been nothing but quiet and respectful and to you. So, fine, can you, but, but listen, so can you let me talk? I don't understand. Okay, pro black. All right, praise God. Go ahead, sweet sugar. And like, we biracial, right? <laughs> and we love everybody. But then you got your, your certain black folks that just... Because you are so pro black and it's okay to be pro black. Well, if you're not even letting me talk, so I don't even understand what you're saying. Because I feel like you're being sarcastic. I'm and I'm not trying. being sarcastic. So can you let me talk? You have to understand black people are not the only people that have been oppressed. So if that you would let me talk, that would be... Ones. Okay? I am so tired of hearing about how people who are biracial had such a difficult upbringing and going through all of these identity issues. This is a responsibility of their parents to make sure they understand who they are in this world and to ensure their confidence in maneuvering in this society is strengthened. I actually remember when Kenya had that dry response for the very real colorism in his shows. He couldn't even properly address it because simply put, there is no excuse for it. The social issue surrounding this is yet again black people shaming tactics and language that they default to when this is called out. They'll say things like, oh, well, if you don't like it, let's see you become a screenwriter and more nonsense to try and counter our rightful criticisms. You don't have to become anything to recognize inaccurate representations and stereotypes at our expense for comedic purposes. I'm so tired of our social behavior being predictable and condescending the moment controversy arises and acting like certain people are above reproach. But that's my thoughts on this situation. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. Let me know what you guys think. Are you tired of also seeing these same illustrations from Kenya Barris that are very colorist in nature? And do you believe that there is a strenuous effort to contest unambiguous black love? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. And again, I'll leave the link in my reaction video to Kenya Barris to show Black as F in the description box. But make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you so much for the continued support and I will see you in the next one.